You know, when Bob originally came to me about doing this podcast, he, how long did you, was your original idea? Wasn't it like 10 minutes or 15 minutes? It's going to be like a 15 to 20 minute thing. Yeah. And we ended up, I pushed, I pushed for the 30 minutes. We have all sorts of bloopers and outtakes that we're going to. Yeah. They'll be sold on, on DVD for like 60 bucks. There's going to be a DVD. That's a super cut of just me offending the guests. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Hello and welcome to the Reintegrate Podcast. Today's guest is Sam Van Emmen, author of the book Disruptive Discipleship, The Power to Break Routine to Kickstart Your Faith from InterVarsity Press. Sam helps people by creating disruptive experiences that are designed to jolt us and reorient us so that we can grow spiritually. He is a resource specialist for the CCO's experiential design team, where he creates transformational experiences for college students, professionals, and organizations. As a public speaker and facilitator, Sam has taught and played in barns and boardrooms, canyons, classrooms, and auditoriums. We are blessed to have Sam on our podcast for the next two episodes. Here, right before Christmas, we will discuss the ways we can ignite Christmas hope in the midst of hardship. In the new year, we will have an episode on how to reinvigorate our faith with what Sam calls disruptive discipleship experiences. Now we are wrapping up 2020 with the Christmas season, which is usually a source of stress and turmoil for a lot of people anyway. And uh, now we're entering that season amidst another COVID spike, amidst some uh, political turmoil. It's not an ideal Christmas season for a lot of people. Even in general, the fact that a lot of people tend to fall into this, into kind of a Christmas malaise, you know, it's the same old, same old every year. It's repetitive. It starts to feel kind of empty because you do the same things every year. And even if they're good, they end up, for a lot of people, losing their meaning. What ideas do you have for, you know, kind of constructively disrupting the Christmas season? A lot of the traditions we have, we do for a reason, and they're important, and they're good. But are there things that perhaps we could be disrupting that would help us see Christmas in, in, in a deeper way, the way it, it should be seen? Yeah, it's good. Thanks, Brendan. That's a good question. For, for me, sometimes what can help me recognize that something needs to change is simply stopping and saying, wait, why am I doing this? Why do we give gifts on Christmas morning or something? I, I mean, it's, it's, it could be that simple. Just that question alone can go, oh, it's because I love my children or I love my, my parents or I love you know, my next door neighbor and it's been a rough year for him. And I think spending this money on this gift and attaching a note to it could be something that would just to show uh, him how I appreciate him, right? And um, so if it's out of habit, because I always do that, we always exchange gifts, I might not even be thoughtful about the gift. But if I ask that very simple question, why am I doing this again? Sometimes that's enough to kind of jog me out of that rut. And uh, I'll say, well, you know what? I don't want to just get him the thing I would naturally get him. I, I think he could use something a little different. So what is that and why? Thoughtfulness requires time. There is a cost of time. Um, and so it's kind of overwhelming to think about it in every area of life. But, um, but we can practice it by doing it in one or two areas. So, so that's, that's one question. So I was thinking about this uh, in light of uh, people who have families and people who will be by themselves for Christmas. Um, for families... There's, there's so many things you could do. I mean, Google how to make Christmas meaningful. I'm sure you'll find some great things. Um, for me, one of my favorite stories is to read about Simeon and Anna uh, in Luke 2, uh, right? So instead of just the traditional Christmas story, like that, that becomes a part of it that we read on Christmas morning. I like to read it out of the message. It's kind of rich language. Uh, it's a little more storytelling feel to it. And so I was thinking about this. Both Simeon and Anna are waiting for the Christ to appear. And Anna's been waiting 80 some years. And here comes Jesus. I mean, she is like, this is the moment she's been waiting for. She's been watching for this. Um, Simeon is like, yeah, this is what I've been 
waiting for and watching for. And this is why this is a valuable moment. This is why this is meaningful. And so all these great things get said. And it says then that Mary and Joseph marveled at the things said about their son, marveled. And so here's a, here's a question. If you have children, what things might others say about your children that would cause you to marvel? Here's why this is an important question. Because if you've had children at home in 2020 and you've been homeschooling or just under the same roof all the time and they're not going off to school uh, or they're going through their teenage years and it's just like it's just a crowded space and you're tired of each other, you're likely to not see the things that otherwise would make you marvel. You're just frustrated. You're sick of seeing each other. <laughs> And holidays like Christmas morning often raise that even higher, right? Brendan, you mentioned it can be very stressful. It's so true. Why? Because, well, I'm jealous. So-and-so got this and I wanted this. This is the wrong color. And then you insult mom and mom feels bad about this. And she's just trying to make this right, right? And it's just like this chaotic moment unfolds and you're just like, oh gosh, this is terrible. And so, so we're already kind of on edge with each other. Like, what does it mean to step back and say, what would someone like Anna or... Simeon say about my child that would cause me to marvel. Um, and then write that down, send them, just put that in a note. A few years ago, I started writing notes to my kids with two girls and I started writing notes to them, just personal notes. They're just from me to my, my daughters. And I, I write one to each girl and I put it on the Christmas tree and then they, they get that. They, they actually care about that more than any of the gifts they get. I, it's amazing. They just, now, some kids love gifts. Some kids love affirmation. Some kids just like hugs. Well, give them those things. I can do that for them. You know, for words, my one kid loves that words of affirmation, a note about why I love her and why I think she's amazing. Oh, my word. She doesn't want anything else. That does it. That's going to be challenging for you if you're a parent to do for your kid when they've been in your space all year long and you just want to blame them for your rough year, right? Uh, that's part of this hard work. Um, that, that's, that's something, I mean, it's, it's a small thing, but, um, if you stop and think about what you might do, you, you're going to come up with some ideas. And if you don't, I mean, ask, I mean, just ask around, look, look for some creative ways to do something. Um, if you're single, you've got a bandwidth. I mean, I, I remember being single was just like, man, I could do whatever I wanted, whenever I wanted. Not exactly, but there was like, <laughs> it was more real than it is now, right? I have obligations. I'm indebted to things and people and mortgage and so on. But when I was, when I was single, I mean, some of those things happened, mortgage and so forth. But I, I had a certain freedom that gave me potential to serve, to care. I didn't live under the same kind of scarcity that I might now when, I'm, when I have other additional obligations. And so I could, I have, I had a level of autonomy that really freed up. Well, you know what? That's a gift. That's a gift for people who have been really struggling this year. If you see folks who, who need help, um, use that power and autonomy and independence and maybe more money, whatever you have, that others don't to care for them in a way that only you can, um, this may not always be the case for you, but right now in this season, do it. Um, don't don't hesitate. Uh, you've got you've got neighbors or coworkers who are in situations that are not like yours. I don't know. Pay attention to what they need. Ask them. Go go out of the way. Do something a little risky for them. Uh, something that costs you. Uh, and it, it, it can it can be contagious. You just want to keep doing it. You saying that made me think about something. Um, I don't even remember why I, I, I thought to do this, but I, because normally I don't, but I, I've been convicted about giving and about generosity. Um, Cause you know, I tithe and you know, 2020 is great um, because you know, we're at a time of technology where my tithe automatically deducts straight from my bank account. I don't even have to think about putting something in the offering plate. Um, but obviously there's more to Christian generosity than just, tithing and I don't remember again what reminded me of that and I was thinking about that like you know when, when was the last time I've been really generous for someone and um so I just sat and I prayed about that for like like a minute mm -hmm. you know it was like nothing and 
pretty immediately I was reminded about a guy that I work with, you know, one of our hourly shop workers was telling me, uh, he had his fam- him and his family had just lost their food stamps hmm. because it, it, he made like more than $25,000 a year, hmm. which for a family of four or something was above, you know, whatever bracket. So he was talking about how, uh, he's just telling me how money was tight. And he told me that a couple of weeks before. And I was like, oh, I'm going to give to this guy for Christmas. This is an appropriate thing for me to do because I've been blessed with the situation I'm in. But that was just one thing. And that literally was the result of me taking about 60 seconds to pray. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so hearing you talk, makes you think, how, how often do I need to, to be doing that? And, and what things do I need to be praying over? And looking, looking for, just opening my eyes and looking around me. Something I would say will be important for you to keep in mind, because this is what happened. This is, this is the good thing that happened and should continue happening. You can't insulate yourself because if you move up in your company, as you get older, you get promoted, you make more money, your, 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 um, your distance from the hourly workers could, could, could get greater, right? And then you'll be further and further insulated from the needs of the world. And what you will do, the temptation will be to see how you are in your own visible layer of people. And so you're going to say, well, I'm kind of at the bottom of that or the middle of that. And it's likely to be like, well, yeah, most of my peers are making a little more money. And maybe I'll go to another company where I can make more like they're making because you're going to feel poor in comparison. My challenge would be for you to always in your life, keep that one wall uninsulated. <laughs> That's a bad metaphor, but like have some area of your life where there, you're, you're attentive to the needs of others who are who are not in the same privileged place as you because that's how you're going to stay in touch with with their reality that keeps you attentive and and then 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 it only takes 60 seconds to remember oh yeah oh my goodness yeah i gotta do something about this you know i think i think all of a sudden when you when you start to isolate yourself to be comfortable and and to to avoid the uh, of people that make you less comfortable because of their needs or whatever then you start to stagnate yeah. because you're not being challenged on these things about yourself, like your, your generosity or your generosity with time or your patience or whatever that might be. You're not being challenged on that because you're able to structure your life around not being challenged. Yeah. Uh, this made me think of my 16 year old daughter. Uh, I was taking her to dance the other night and uh, um, it's so, so we're on our way there and um I'm behind a couple of cars that had pulled out in front of me. And so we, we were just like slowing down way under the speed limit and so on. And so they, they turned left where I was supposed to also turn left and we would have just stayed behind them for a while. But instead I went forward, I went straight. And she said, is, is this, is this another way to get to dance? And I was like, well, I didn't want to be behind those people and wait for them. And so I'm going to go this way. And she was just like, so you avoided the possibility of dealing with your impatience. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> and she said it very kindly because she's like that. She's just a, a sweet kid. And, but she, she was like, so you avoided your, <laughs> I was like, yeah, kind of. Yeah, it's kind of what I did. Now she's very respectful, but I need that kind of voice. I need people in my life who are going to call me out like that. <laughs> well, you have a great Christmas. You and yeah, your, thanks. your, how thanks. old are your girls? Uh, 19 and 16. 19 and 16. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I one of the things that, that we've we've done different things over the years. We we all you know we have traditions and so forth. But um, uh, sometimes I make them. We, they didn't grow up Presbyterian, but sometimes I make them sing out of a Presbyterian hymnal that I stole from a church when I was in choir years ago. <laughs> um, so we'll sing hymns or something. But we often read you know some piece of scripture. And I, I try to dance around with different stories. So it's not just like the, what they heard in church, you know, but yeah, the Simeon and Anna piece is like a really big, what does it mean to live with that kind of hope? Um, some, something I've thought about this year is, and I have a line from the book about this, that hope or uh, expectancy 
is not about predictability, but adaptability. And I think that's been so true in 2020. Um, adaptability says, Lord, whatever you have for me, that is what I am expectant to happen. I, I'm going to lean into that. Whereas predictability says, well, I've got some expectations here of my own. I think this is how it should pan out. I think this is what you should do. And that's all I'm going to hold out for. And, and you can see where it gets us, you know, mm -hmm. with, the, with the election cycle and all the, just the chaos going on right now. Um, what a, I mean, it's a mess because we have these ideas of what, of how life should unfold. And when it doesn't, we're frustrated. We're angry because it didn't happen like I did. This isn't what I hoped for. Oh, what if you, what if we hoped differently? <laughs> Um, I, I was thinking, I mean, that, that, that made me think about like, we all know people who are so against our own political views. I mean, we, we, um, our pastor the last few weeks has shown uh, those pictures where it's like, is this a witch or a young woman, right? Or is this a duck or a, a I don't know, someone with a, a hat on or something. You know, those dual pictures you'll see, they're black and white, right? Mm -hmm. And, um, or the gold dress, you know, or the blue dress, right? Mm -hmm. That kind of thing. Um, the Yanni and Laurel audio piece. And someone, someone sees the gold dress and you see the blue dress and you just are like, how on earth? How? It, it's gold. And they're like, it's blue. What is wrong with you? You know, that is exactly what's happening politically right now. And in our world, what would it mean to give a gift, either a note of gratitude or a, an actual gift to someone who sees the blue dress and it's gold to you? religiously, politically, you know, but what they think about the, what the world should be doing right now or the election process, just say, hey, you know what? It's been frustrating. We haven't been able to talk about hardly anything, but here's how I love you. Here's what I appreciate about you. About you. Here's, where, here's what makes me marvel about you and the way that Jesus has made you, right? Um, that despite our differences, I, I see the gift of God in you and here's how. Oh, whoa, <laughs> imagine doing that. That'd be, I think that would be really challenging and potentially very rich. I don't want to do that. I, I want to hate people. I'm sorry. Yeah, Just... right. Well, we do. <laughs> we do. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to categorize them over there. I don't want. Yeah, it's those people. Those yeah. people. Those people are the worst people, aren't they? Those people. Yeah. Totally uh, centrists. I hate them. <laughs> <laughs> filthy moderates. <laughs> Anyway, well, so that, that's, that's a Christmas. I think that's a, I, this year, do something for someone you just can't imagine having a conversation with. Yep. So um, expect me to give you a call, Brennan. I mean, I have, to, I have things to share with you about that. <laughs> yeah. How this 23-year-old that gets under my skin, he's a, he's a good guy after all. Yeah, and no yes. bobblehead gifts of like Biden or Trump. Like this is like, <laughs> you know, we can't be... Uh, I'm going to send you a bobblehead doll of, of Nick Chubb. Yeah. All right. Since you're a Steelers Great. fan. Yeah. I will. I'll probably display it <laughs> Plus, because I can honor, I can honor good things when they come now. Now, Henry Nowen is always great at oh, there's a printer in the background. Someone must be printing. <laughs> um, good. It was only one page. Um, it's a 13 page document your daughter has the front and back color. <laughs> um, Henry now is always really good about saying when we show true hospitality people can enter our space and be free and what that does is allows us to see God's imprint on their life it's when they can be fully themselves and there's no agenda. I, I, I'm not trying to change them in this moment. I am I'm saying here is a cup of tea. You are welcome into my space. Let's talk. And they feel honored. They feel like I know their language as well as they know their language. This is a, a, a common piece of wisdom when you're debating with someone that you understand their own vocabulary and can speak it in a way that they appreciate it. 
Anyway, that freedom that you end up experiencing allows you to see the, the richest sense of humanness that God has imprinted upon them. And, and that, that reveals the attributes of the Lord. It's through hospitality. That's a gift. Very difficult. So one of my favorite books is Reaching Out because, because of the way he talks about this progression of the spiritual life from, from uh, you know, identity to community to spirituality. This is Reaching Out by Henry Nouwen. On, Henri Nouwen. <laughs> on, Henri. Henri, Henri Nouwen, yeah. Nouwen. Yeah, because I think he understood his own, his own inner life and its limitations. This is, I think, why people have become such followers of writings of people like Henry Nouwen is because he understood his own limitations. He was very aware of his faults and his need for the Lord. And that made him introspective and it made him a, a guide for the inner life. And people who are not introspective, reflective, humble, aren't guides. They don't guide anyone. No one wants, no one wants that kind of you know, journey into the inner life because they're not going there. It's, it's superficial. It's reactive. It's emotional. It's on the surface. Anyway, I'm, I'm preaching to the choir here. I mean, it, you know. Not really. <laughs> I need to hear that. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. it's always good for me to go back and revisit some of those writings. Yeah. It's good to hear. I, I can say for me personally, anyway, I've been, I've been pretty out of sorts the last couple of months, mm. pretty off center spiritually. And I, uh, mm. I, I just on Monday got out of quarantine. I had COVID mm. uh, and that was, not a spiritually productive time for me either <laughs> just because of the the boredom i guess mm. not because i was sick because I, I barely i was barely sick <laughs> mm. but just the frustration and the boredom you know yeah mm -hmm. yeah thanks thanks for naming that that's that's good those those are revealing moments for us where you come out of that and you go i uh, there's <laughs> I don't want to live like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm out of it again. So I'm trying to, uh, you know, I'm, I'm back into life. So, so it's like, what can I be doing? You know? Yeah. How, how can I be intentional right now in the lamest Christmas in, uh, <laughs> in who knows how long, well, who knows how long. Yeah. Right. I mean, this is, this is so different. Yeah. Those are moments to be grateful for. I mean, Maybe it's too soon for you, Brendan. But <laughs> for me personally, this has definitely been a year where a lot of rocks have been turned over, mm -hmm. and it's been frustrating because they've been repeatedly turned over, and I'm like, "Stop turning over my rocks! <laughs> I don't like all this stuff crawling out of them. I can't <laughs> stop it." And, that, and that's what it's felt like. It's felt it's felt like a year of backsliding for me spiritually in a lot of ways. But this stuff has always been there. Yeah, Ooh. you know, and and I, uh, and I, and I look I look back on it. And before I realized it was there when I thought I was much better. I mean, I've thought about that a lot. Like, man, I wish I could go back to my senior year of college when I was president of the campus ministry. And I was, uh, now I, I am navigating adulthood and there are all these things about myself that I am discovering that I really don't like. <laughs> and as you said, they have been there all along, but they were in the shadows or back in the corner or you didn't have time to engage them and now they're kind of fighting for airtime yep wow. but that's that's part of the process yeah it is yeah imagine insulating yourself from those things they'll make their way out either in relationships or if you're in management positions or someday when you're a whatever old man uh who never dealt with things that should have been dealt with when you were 23 and 33. Oh, I, I, I would like to see grumpy old Brendan because grumpy young Gr Brendan's fun to be around. <laughs> you know, I, by God's grace, I hope one day I can grow up to be a, like a wise old man, but I think the, the grumpy one is more likely. So maybe I can compromise with God and be a grumpy, wise old man. <laughs> oh, yeah. A little edge, a little edge, Some wisdom, <laughs> but a little edge. <laughs> I just imagine an 85 year old Brendan ranting about something for a half hour. I've been known every once in a while, certain topics. 
Not important, not important ones though, but like. <laughs> no, <it's> not <laughs> usual, yeah. Right, right. Uh, ranting can be a, a skill uh, that, you, that you hone. Yeah, even if you get people talking. Oh, I was in a Spanish class in college and uh, we were supposed to speak Spanish all the time, but just people weren't. They just weren't speaking at all. And so the professor put us in two groups and he it was like all the guys and all the girls. And I, I don't know how they would pull that off now, but that, that's what they did. It separated according to gender. And uh, he said, okay, uh, women belong in the kitchen, go. And that was the <laughs> stomach. And he just sat back, his chair and oh man, he, the guys of course egged it on and the women were offended and everyone started yelling <laughs> Spanish or I'm docking you points. And people were just like, oh, hey, look, hey. and they're trying to, <laughs> The words out and you like can't conjugate <laughs> verbs fast enough. <sighs> it was fantastic. I'm not recommending that, but there there is something about you know anyway. Being angry, <laughs> learning Spanish through anger. It's a great, great <laughs> <laughs> no. but it can get people to, to talk when they wouldn't normally. Well thanks Sam. I'll let you go. And uh yeah, I'll, I'll have fun editing this. This is a good one. Good. All right. Yeah, we're finishing the year off strong, so it's good. Oh, it's good. cool. Great. <laughs> Originally, we were just going to finish the year off with me ranting, but then Bob was like, oh, yeah, I got this guy, Sam. Sorry, Brendan. Uh, oh. <laughs> Episode 16. Oh, really? Yeah. Six, man. Wow, you guys. Good for you. It, it's really ended up being a blessing for me. I feel like I'm getting like a extremely concentrated christian education yeah yeah i was just thinking of that oh my goodness yeah you're just listening in on great minds i mean i want to be there too in my newsletter that's what i said he's like you know making omelets out of broken eggs you know i'm like i'm doing all these zoom meetings and yet i know all these people around the country that i could be like interviewing and do a podcast and so yeah. it was like let's make an omelet out of this broken egg yeah, that's, there you go. That's good, Bob. So, I think we need to start cold calling like some big celebrities to get on this show. I think that's, yeah, that's next year. That's what I'm definitely going to do. We're, we're going to go for like uh, NT Wright. Hey, you're not that busy, are you? <laughs> hey, your, your, your book's got, uh, wait, how many stars does it have on Amazon? Your book has five stars on Amazon. Fantastic. 23 reviews. There you go. That's, uh, uh, let me, I mean, while we're searching on Amazon, I have to compare it to another book <laughs> that uh, I don't think is uh, four and a half stars, only nine reviews. Oh, Sorry, man. Bob. Uh, see? Oh, man. You just blew him out of the water, Sam. I hope that feels good. <laughs> right. I want to know who that person who gave me. Four, yeah, four star review that knocked me down out of five. I tell you, yeah. uh, it was Newt Larson. <laughs> Newt? <laughs> I literally was. My, my pastoral mentor. I interned no under way. this man. No way. As soon oh, as oh. I saw, as soon as I saw the name, oh, he, he, he actually he, he it, was, it was a positive review though. <laughs> he doesn't actually give you any criticism he just gives you four stars so you'll never know why you didn't get five. Oh no okay uh, no bob this is who you need to send a gift to this christmas that's right because right? he's on the <laughs> other side he's your newt. so i'm going to go on newt larson's book and i'm going to give him a terrible <laughs> and uh and so i'm going to go on on it i got to knock him down gotta knock him yeah down. bring him down i, I really and feel like to to fit in with this podcast better, I need to publish a book and get my doctorate. No, <laughs> no, I think I like, this is what I like about this. I mean, you sure go do that if you want to, but I, I think <laughs> this is a great, um, especially not, I don't know. I mean, if I was talking a lot, there's not a lot of room for banter, but I, I mean, I love the, the back and forth even that we've been doing here this 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 sort of thing especially when it's running smoothly and you're you're keeping it going um that as a communication major i'm sure you studied things like that like just to keep that conversation rolling and moving one topic to the next and keeping stuff fired up and so on is an approach that you can take um and and you having the differences that you have not just age 
education and your current work experience and your approach to life and so on, I think really adds something. I appreciate that. Thank you, Sam. I do, I do too.